year. Uh, He's always in a really good... Red China. What's that? <laughs> Red China. Red China Johnny Ray, South Pacific. Uh, Walter Mitchell. Uh, but now how... Now you have two girls, right? Just one. Just one, okay. Now how old Just is she? One. She's three now. Three, which is crazy because Doug was the... They said it would never, ever happen. A, that you got married, and B, that you had a daughter. That yeah. was, you know, that was that's a whole other lifetime ago for you. Uh, I know. And uh, you know, you know, it's so funny. I mean, I can think about these guys. I probably was so young that I remember Chris when he was a caller. Yeah. And not only that, I'll never forget. I called up Steve one time and I said, Steve, I got a list of free agents. Let me. I want to throw them at you, and I want to know wh- where they are if you know where they are. And when I was done, I hung up, and you called up after that. You said you were in your car going to get Chinese food, <laughs> and you couldn't get out of your car until I said the whole list. Right, right. And I, I always remember saying, that's so cool. I said, you know, because a lot of times you call, and you're like, you know, at least you want to be interested, you yeah, know? I, I, the I, fact I, that I had you wait in your car, I yeah, knew I was I remember, an interesting phone I remember call. that call, and I remember the Chinese restaurant, too. It wasn't one I went to that often. Yeah, no. And was, that, was, that was before you were married. Oh, no, yeah. no, you were married. I was married, yeah. Before you had kids. Yep. I remember that, like nah. the, the very first time that I didn't call, they're saying, "Where's Chris? Why isn't Chris? Why isn't Chris?" Because ten thirty was always my slot to call. Why isn't Why isn't Chris called? Why isn't Chris called? And my brother of all people who would never listen, my brother of all people calls up and goes, "It's it was either my birthday or my son's birthday." He's like, "That's why he has to call." I'm like, oh, okay. It was, it was just funny that my brother winds up calling. <laughs> He's like, "You got? I don't know if my dad told him to, or whatever." It was. Now really that's a, now that you said that. That's another one. I. There was, you had a guest on, the three of you, and the guy was talking, and instead of saying the Yankee GM, he said Frank Cashin. And when I called after it, I said, the guy said Frank Cashin, and you guys were like, no, he didn't say that. I said, yeah, he said it. And your brother called you up on the cell phone <laughs> to tell you that he did yeah, say Frank that's, Cashin. That's funny. And I remember ending that call by saying, tell your brother thanks for having yeah, my back. that's right, that's right. That's funny, I, yeah. No, I he, remember that. I mean, I, you know, all the things that you've gone through, I just... Right, no. I, I mean, you know, I remember that, you know, sad time when your dad passed away, yeah. and, I, you know, I called up to give you condolences, and you said to me, every time you would talk to your father after the show and your father would always say I agree with everything that Doug said that's about right. the Mets that's right yeah I'm no like, that's so cool that was yeah but you know it, it's it's funny because uh, you know so many memories come fl- fl- cause I, like I said we're cleaning up my basement so I have all these mini discs of all these interviews that we ever did we had so we just so many under the sun that were like you know guys that are now hugely famous that we always had that we had on the show yeah. all the time now they're hugely famous it was really something you know, like whether it be uh, who's the guy um, uh, Whit- uh, Jason Whitlock was always on with uh, so just different Alan Hahn uh, Alan Hahn was the always giant, on the giant beat writer Goes on SNY a lot. What's his name? Oh, uh, uh, yeah, Ralph Vaccaro. Oh, Ralph Vaccaro. Yeah. Sorry, Ralph Vaccaro. Right, right. Ralph Vaccaro. Oh, all the time. Yeah, great right, guy. Yeah. Great guy. Uh, he yeah. texts me. From, yeah, I get texts from him from time to time. Well, uh, uh, Garofolo, the guy who's now on uh, NFL Network, he one time, for whatever reason, was driving past, and he's a football guy, was dri- he was a giant speed rider, but now he's with NFL Network. He was driving, he was in the Bronx for whatever reason, driving past Yankee Stadium, and he stopped to call us, <laughs> just because. And he was talking uh, to Yankees with us, so it was. Uh, well, when when Jason Baumbach, who's you now with Tuesday, he called me when Corey Lytle crashed into the building in the city before anyone knew about it. And he's like, I just want you to know it was Corey Lytle. I was like, what? Wow. You know, it's like, yeah. So and that was me. I was at work. It was like four o'clock in the afternoon on a, on a weekday. And yeah, we had some really. And then we had during the lockouts of the NHL, we had to have uh, uh, Evan Grossman, who was the post beat writer for the Islanders, who's now back with one of the papers. We had uh, Alan Hahn. Oh, and we, and we had, uh, with his, FAN, I think. Is he? And we had Evan. Yeah. Andrew Grossman? No, Evan Grossman. I think he's back with the Post. But Evan Grossman, huge Springsteen fan. So Kim Tracy used to follow us with with Thunder Road. So Evan would always call at the end of the show so he can go into to Thunder Road and talk with Kim about which bootlegs he has of Bruce shows. It was really, really cool. Cool kind of and stuff. And was a guy gross. And you, had, and you had Buster Only. Buster Only, who I just found an email from a few a few days ago. I have his uh, home number and his cell number. <laughs> so if we ever Buster wanna, Only? Yeah. yeah cause he, he was on with, Buster Only was on with us. Who's uh, Tim Kirshen was on with us a lot. Uh, yeah, we had... Uh. We had some, uh, uh, and then the, the only, actually, there, there, there are three guests. Only one person ever, 
ever in all the years doing the show ever turned us down. It was uh, a writer in Minnesota, the Twins. Uh, his name's his name is African American. His name is Lavelle Mc. Lave, Lave, oh yeah, I know who you're talking guy. about. He's a good writer, but he turned us down. He's like, no, nah, I don't think so. Um, then the oh, the writer, we, <laughs> there was a, a guy. He's uh, Howard Bryant. If you know who Howard Bryant is, he was he forgot that he was booked with us. His like publicist booked him or whatever, and he had written a book. And his wife answered the phone, and he's screaming at. Her. And then, like two years later, we read that he was like accused of abusing her. He's still he's still a prominent guy, so I guess this charges went by the wayside. But that was it. But the one guy that we ever we, that Steve and I just despised as a guest because there were so many things wrong about his book and things he said, and he was arrogant and everything was Jeff Perlman. And now. Jeff Perlman has a book coming out on the USFL, which is probably like my favorite sports topic of all time, so I'm going to have to buy it. But he's also just won some award this year for sports writers that's been won by really good sports writers in the, in the past. And in fact, he tweeted out, he's like, which name doesn't belong here? And it was his, you know. It's like, But he was uh, the one guest we just didn't ever like at all. We just despised, you know. So, Jeff now, Perlman. What is Adam Rubin doing these days? That's the interesting thing. So he's, you know, he had he took the, you know, the, the ESPN News New York was like laying off people and Daily News. Well, he left Daily News for New York, ASP New York. So he took the, the, when they were doing packages, he raised his hand and said, I'll take a package, you know, because he went to work as the, um, he's got, they had a name for it. It's, it's NYU, New York Institute of Technology, which is a Division One baseball school. Athletic Department. He's no, they athletic dropped department. Division One. He, did they? I thought yes. their baseball team was Division One. They dropped it. I did think they? they went down. They, he was playing like the Great West Conference. He was their associate athletic director, and he was also their head of, like, they didn't call it sports information director, but that's what you call it most big schools. So, like, you know, like the PR guy. So, which is huge because getting into the world of academia generally means things like tenure and benefits, and you're not going anywhere. You're not going to get fired, basically. And you're always going to have a, a steady paycheck and everything. He did. At the same time, SNY was using him, but I don't yeah, see I don't yeah. see him doing it. Is he doing anything with it? I, 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 I don't I, see him on. That. I look at the blog. I don't see him writing. Yeah. I don't see him. And I sent him an email when we were doing our little radiothon, and he didn't get back to me. And I sent him to his NYIT email address too, and he, and he didn't get back to me. So I wonder if he's just gone all in on doing that NYIT stuff, which is interesting because he really, at the end of the day, he's a Wharton grad, he's a smart guy. At the end of the day, he should be if he's going to do this stuff. He's gonna, if he's going to go all in on doing like. Um, the 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 NYU the sports athletic director stuff. Yeah. He should go to a big school because he's got the experience and he's he'd, he'd be yeah. a the guy's legendary you, for a certain press conference. You went to Wharton. Yeah. Mean, you could be president Warden. and go to Wharton. You can get Wharton. Yeah, oh. exactly. So uh, Donald tra- transferred from Fordham to to University of Pennsylvania. No one knows that. But, now yeah. is his brother still coaching the high school? His brother is the MacArthur. Uh, yeah, he coached okay. the MacArthur the Generals uh, in basketball, boys basketball, and he coaches some other sports there as well. And he's also a uh, well. Now, um, Adam's father, Doctor Rubin, because he was a he, was, he has a PhD, was a longtime science teacher at Uniondale High School. And Adam's brother, who's also the MacArthur coach, is also a teacher at MacArthur. I just don't know what subject he teaches. I don't know what. Uh, he's not a phys ed teacher. He's not a phys ed teacher. No, that's weird. No. He's a phys ed teacher. No, he's a he's a, definitely an, like a, like a, an academic Physics. subject. And that's why if you ever read the the Levittown Gazette or whatever the newspaper of Levittown is, the MacArthur boys basketball team always had the best written stories because Adam always wrote the stories for the Levittown Gazette or whatever it was. So, yeah. You know, it's funny. I had a friend that worked for a fence company. He used to say he had a PhD, a post hole digger. <laughs> <laughs> oh, which fence yeah. company was this? Oh, what was that? The horse, uh, was, wasn't, the, that was wasn't the, the horse owner? Eight fence in uh, Franklin Square. Oh, okay. I mean, that, that probably don't even exist. No, okay. oh. He was going for Amandola. Oh, yeah, I know the original guy. However, I've always found Rose to be the best, incidentally. But, uh, I know yeah. the original. Amandola started out of Franklin Square. Oh. Ah. Yeah. So. You know, I, I go around now to all you know, my Yankee fans in here, and I'm, I go up to them and I say, so nobody's going to touch my Boston Red Sox. <laughs> And they look at me like, that's right, I jumped so far onto yeah. that bandwagon. But remember, remember Al from the, our, our radio show used to always uh, call them Met Sox fans? Oh, he's like, oh, so yeah. you're a Met Sox fan. Anyone, any Met, Met, Met fan rooting for the Red Sox? You're a Met Sox fan. Yeah, that's like, yeah. I'm a Met well, your, sec- fan. your second favorite team was anybody who was playing anybody the Anybody playing the Yankees, yeah, exactly. That was, though we had, in, in growing up when I was a kid, my we had three pennants. Back when back when you really liked having pennants, nowadays nobody likes them, but we had three, we had the Met 
Mets, the Yankees, and the Red Sox pen into my room in the late seventies for whatever reason. So I still remember them being up Penance. on the. Were they on make the, those in nineteen eighteen? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Do they still sell those? At they time? sell them. They're small. They're like uh, little things. I bought one. I bought Did one you? like three years ago at Disney. How big Disney. was it? It was a big one. Yeah, the Brooklyn big. Dodgers. Yeah, so it's nice to be a throwback. Dodgers haven't played here since fifty eight. It was the Brooklyn Dodgers National League Championship pennant. It's sitting in my basement. It's like a, a thick felt. I, I remember and I, I remember being on Broadway in nineteen ninety six when the Yankees were having their ticker tape parade and and, and and it made me happy to say this, but no one else was around to hear it. But like some vendors like uh, do you want to buy a pennant? Do you do you do you want to buy a Yankees pennant? And I said, well, George Steinberg already did. <laughs> it's like, so yeah, right. I, I, I liked the line, but it didn't really matter. That was say, hey, you know, yeah. that's, a, that's yeah. a good line. Yeah. You know, my uh, my mom, who's no longer with us, her big claim to fame, she was a boss, a uh, Brooklyn Dodgers fan, but she was at um, Don Lawson's perfect game. Oh, wow. At 56, yeah. She yeah. said by the end of the game, she was rooting for him to get it because she knew she was watching history. He's still, I mean, to think about that, perfect game in a World Series is just unbelievable. He's still alive, right? He lives in, um, uh, he lives in, is it North Dakota or South, South Dakota, I think. He, and in fact, one time he was on a diner, drive ins and dives with Guy Fieri because they went to a restaurant in his hometown. <laughs> and they had, there in that booth was, and he was a San Diego native, which was very significant because he was, when, when Di- David Wells is a San Diego native who threw a perfect game for, for the Yankees in, in 96. And, and also, I think, if I remember correctly, when David Cohn had his no hitter, uh, Larson and Berra were, were both in attendance. Yeah. Right, that was they threw out the yeah. first pitch or whatever yeah. it was. Yeah, oh, that wow, was, that's that was really cool. It was, it was a Sunday afternoon, I think it was. Yeah, you know, I saw um, Expos. You know, on YouTube, was, I think it was YouTube, but um, Bob Uke is induction to the Hall of Fame. You, you know, are as the a broadcaster. S- you are the second person to tell me that in this week. My friend Jack just said that the other day that he watched Bob Uke's induction. He, uh, Did and, he say it was the, it was one of the funniest things he, he ever said? Saw? He said it was so every line was so dry. Every single line was just so well crafted. And I remember he I saw. Was, I remember laughing my you know what off. It was so funny. He said at one point it was. I thought one of the funniest lines. He goes, look. He goes, I don't want to sound like sour grapes, but I should have. I still feel like I should have got in as a player. <laughs> you know, and then you know how he, he was always famous for his pass balls, right? And he said that he was at. He was on one of the Negroes teams, and they were playing against the brother. I forget which team. You know who right. the team he was on, but he said the parents were at the game for the weekend, and they were behind home plate. And he goes, I got to see them, the, the parents, more than they did that weekend. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, he has great lines about, great about, lines about being signed, you know, like he, how how much his dad had to pay the, the team. Right. <laughs> yeah. go, he's, he's like, I go, signed go, for whatever. That's how, that's all my dad like, can afford. <laughs> grab a bat and end this rally or something, you know. Just, and he'd do it with such a straight fit. Like you right. said, that deadpan thing was the best. And, 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 I'll, and I'll talk about this whenever I talk about baseball players. Because, you know, you'll be a, I, like on Sunday we played this team of softball where the shortstop was, the kid was great. But there's thousands of great players out there. You never, you never realize it. And you think about Bob Euchre. Bob Euchre was the best player in his town growing up, in his exactly. high school, everywhere, exactly. every step of the he way. Does. That's Except why when people, major make, yeah, when people make fun of these certain players, oh, he stinks. He, right. he doesn't yeah. stink. You know, like they exactly. about, and, and so any guy playing in the major leagues does not stink. He's phenomenal. Yeah. I mean, like, I always would say that. At one point in Bob Euchre's life, he was the best wherever he was going. Right. And you're the you best. You don't get to the major leagues, but you know, I'm and we got to let you go because we got right. FM Punk coming up. See you, Doug. All right, guys. All right. And uh, that was Doug calling from, from the post office, yes. I guess. Or yes. What does he say now? Franklin Square? Franklin Square, yeah. But I guess I got to load this up right here. Tempted. All right. All right. Don't All right. forget Piano Man Sunday afternoon, 3 p.m. 3 p.m. set right here at 90.3 WHBC. I'm Chris Baldoon. Bye, everybody. Thanks for coming. Cheers. We'll see you on the airways. See you guys. All right. It's been another great show. Uh, congratulations to the New York Cosmos, actually. I wanted to throw it up a little bit. <laughs> wow. Wow. They, they, uh, <laughs> the they, Cosmos. They, they, they advanced to their uh, playoffs, and they're going to be playing the Brooklyn Italians at Columbia this weekend. With oh. the Brooklyn what? Italians. Oh, my That's God. The called. Brooklyn Italians. I love it. <laughs> Which sounds That's so actually a team name. Too. <laughs> All right, Cameron, what do you say for yourself? All right, Yankees. Get me Machado. I don't care. I want Machado. Twitter.com forward slash sports talk 903. Sports talk at optonline.net. 
And don't forget, we're here every Thursday evening, 9 p.m. to 11 p.m. What is our virtual free 90.3 WHPC? Bye, everybody. Thanks for letting us your ears.